What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Big O's Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. As always, it's your boy, Nick. I know I literally said in my last video, if big news happens, I'm just gonna put a pinned comment on the Team Outlook video that it happened to. And I literally used this specific example of Tannehill was out for the year. And he is now. Jay Cutler signs with the Dolphins. But I was like, fudge it, man. I'm in the mood. I'm in the zone. Let me get out a full article, which I already posted on the website and a video for this. My quick reaction, quick take. What does the Jay Cutler one-year signing mean to the Dolphins, mean to Jay Cutler in terms of fantasy, and the rest of the weapons in Miami? Let's get to it. If you're not following me on Twitter, make sure you do that real quick because I tweet out a lot of random stats, a lot of good facts. If I drop articles or videos, I always tweet them out. So do that real quick before we start. I'm gonna give you like two seconds to do it. Go do it. So we got Jay Cutler coming to Miami, right? Does his best, uh, who's that guy from the White House? Scaramucci or whatever? Does his best Scaramucci impression. Within 10 days of signing with Fox Sports, he's out of there. I know it's completely two different situations and that literally made no sense, but you get the point. Supposed to be a broadcaster, now he's being brought into Miami to play quarterback. Signs a one year, $10 million contract, which now you can safely assume Tannehill is out for the year. I think he tore his ACL, or at least there's a partial tear, which will mean he'll be out for the year. Now, this is probably the best situation that Miami could have hoped for, right? With Adam Gase already there, they would have had to default back to Matt Moore as their backup quarterback. And I know for some reason, like the Twitter experts on fantasy were like, oh, Matt Moore's not bad. He hasn't thrown more than 90 pass attempts in a year since 2011. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Matt Moore was not their best option. Behind him, they could have signed some free agent. Colin Kaepernick actually would have been interesting. But Jay Cutler definitely was the best thing that could have happened to them. Luckily, we have a little sample size to work off of. Because in 2015, Adam Gase was the offensive coordinator in Chicago when Cutler was quarterback there. Cutler played in 15 games. In week two, he left a game against the Cardinals early with a hamstring injury. He left in the first half. He only attempted like nine passes. So I'm going to pull that game out and we'll go from the 14 game sample size of him being the actual quarterback. If you look at those 14 games, he averaged 253 passing yards, had a 20 to 10 touchdown to interception ratio. In terms of percentage, that was actually a career best for him. He also had a career best in passer rating under Gase in 2015, 92.3. Overall, it's not bad passing numbers for him. When you look at completion percentage, he was ranked 17th in the NFL. When you look at fantasy points per dropback, he was ranked 16th in the NFL among quarterbacks, like 0.46 fantasy points per dropback. So pretty mediocre. Uh, when you look at the numbers he put up in those 14 games, you prorated out to 16 full games. Gives you 4,048 passing yards, 23 passing touchdowns, 11 and a half interceptions. Just over 200 rushing yards and a single rushing touchdown. Last year, that would have tied him with Andy Dalton for quarterback 14 overall. Cutler hasn't played a full 16 games since I think it was 2011 or 2010, so you can't really, it's hard to prorate that out and expect those numbers. What I do like about Cutler coming into this offense is think about the weapons. He's definitely coming to a more favorable situation in terms of weapons than he had in Chicago in 2015. And in 2015, he was ranked 10th overall among quarterbacks in deep ball accuracy percentage. 41% on his deep balls, 20 yards or more. He's 34 years old, and like I said, I'm not expecting him to play in the full 16 games, and I definitely wouldn't even be looking at him in 10, 12, probably not 14 team leagues, but if you're in a deeper league, maybe 14, probably 16 and above, or two quarterback leagues, it's definitely someone to keep an eye on, definitely on your radar, probably ranked between maybe 16 and 20 in my rankings because He's got good weapons there in Miami. Overall though, for the weapons, when I look at this, I, I don't see a drastic change in fantasy outlooks for the most part when it comes to swapping out Cutler for Tannehill. And we'll start with Devontae Parker, which is also cool because we have kind of a sample size to work off of given that Devontae Parker is super similar in skill set, ability, like size, length to Alshon Jeffrey, who Cutler played with in Chicago. Now we go back to 2015, you know, both of these guys' problems are that they can't stay on the field. In 2015, Jeffrey played in nine games with Cutler. Parker in the same season played in eight games. When you look at Jeffrey's number during that nine game span, it was really, really, really good. He averaged like 10 and a half targets, six, six catches, almost 90 receiving yards, 0.44 touchdowns per game. Those are really good fantasy numbers. I mean, it's stupid to assume that Parker is gonna get anywhere near those kind of looks, 10 and a half targets a game, because he's gotta share a lot, of the, a lot of the targets with other good weapons on the team. When you look back when Alshon Jeffrey was getting those targets, the rest of, of the weapons on the team were like mediocre at best. You had Mark 
Martellus Bennett towards the end of his career. Matt Forte, same thing. Marcus Wilson was their wide receiver too. Eddie Royal, Zach Miller. None of them really played in a full season. Forte and Miller were the only two of those last names I listed to play in more than 11 games that season. So he was working with like a, a mediocre group of talents mixed with a lot of injury. When you look at how these how these two pair together, right, Parker and Cutler, the best aspect of Parker's game is definitely his ability to get downfield, his leaping ability to beat defenders on the long ball, to jump up and snatch the ball out of the air, right? I mentioned before his deep ball accuracy. As per player profile, we look at Tannehill last year, ranked 13th amongst quarterback in the NFL with 39% deep ball completion percentage. Cutler, 10th in 2015, 40.9%. So it's not a big gap in terms of percentage, in terms of like accuracy, but you got to take that with a grain of salt because, you know, just straight up completion percentage doesn't take into a lot of factors like did the wide receiver give up on the ball? Is the defender like really good? You know, you don't, you can't compare like the same, it's not neutral defenders, the same guys every time. Did the receiver drop the ball? So there's a lot of room for error there, but it's probably safe to say based off those numbers that they were probably in the same range in terms of accuracy when it comes to the deep ball. Another thing I did kind of find interesting was, you know, I mean, unsurprisingly, I guess, but given like Cutler's kind of like fuck it and chuck it attitude, he ranked 17th among quarterbacks in terms of air yards, yards that the ball traveled in the air. He had about 1851, so 1,851 air yards, which is ranked 17th in the NFL. Tannehill last year was ranked 28th with 1,574. So while their percentage, completion percentage on deep balls is around the same, just means that Cutler had a higher volume of them. Not by much, but he's still chucking the ball longer more often than Tannehill was. Basically, the point I'm getting to here is that I don't see Parker or Stills, both kind of the same similar long vertical stretch kind of players. I don't see either of their outlooks changing much with this quarterback swap. If anything, it stays the same. I, I actually think this could possibly be an upgrade for Parker. Given where they're going in the draft, Parker's wide receiver 37, 77th overall. Stills is 168th overall wide receiver 55. I'm not going to be moving them up or down in my rankings based on this swap. Wow, I'm talking really fast. I'm tired. Shout out Addy season. The other two weapons in the passing game that we want to focus on, of course, is Jarvis Landry and Julius Thomas, their new tight end. I think the scripts actually flip a little bit for these two guys. I want you to take a look at a tweet and a chart from this guy, Graham Barfield, really good fantasy analyst. Go follow him on Twitter if you're not. Now, he had this tweet this morning said possibly a personal initial issue. Like I kind of said, Cutler's fucking and chucking attitude. Only 10.1% of his attempts were short and over the middle with Adam Gase in Chicago, ranked dead last in 2015 among quarterbacks. You look at Ryan Tannehill, 16.1%. So still on the lower side, but 6% more passes were short and over the middle. I don't think that bodes well for Jarvis Landry. I already think Jarvis Landry before this swap happened was being overvalued where he's being picked. Right now, he's going 38th overall as wide receiver 19. I think the emergence of Jay Ajayi is a huge hit to, to his statistics and his ceiling, or I get, yeah, his ceiling and floor. Because we saw over the second half of last year how Jay Ajayi was getting way more involved. Landry's target numbers, reception numbers, receiving yards all went down as Jay Ajayi kind of took over that featured role. Now you look at Cutler, who doesn't utilize his slot receivers, he doesn't utilize those over the middle passes much. I was looking back at Cutler in Chicago, right? Going back to 2012, I dated back to 2012, I was looking at his slot receivers. The best season that a slot receiver has had with Jay Cutler at quarterback was back in 2013, Earl Bennett. 32 catches, 243 yards, four touchdowns. Obviously, Landry's a much better talent, but it just kind of goes to show you the usage. Cutler was always using Alshon Jeffrey, Brandon Marshall, Martellus Bennett. Those were his, he liked the big targets. He liked the outside guys that could stretch the field. He was not a guy who fed balls to guys like Jarvis Landry. So I think this really kind of kills Landry's value. Being picked at like a lower end wide receiver two, and I think that's like, he's like a low end wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three in full PPR. If you're talking about anything less than full PPR, so 0.5 PPR standard league, he is a middle to low wide receiver three right now in that offense, if that. Now, on the other hand, you look at Cutler using the tight end. They have Julius Thomas who came in, right? He was in Jacksonville. Now he comes over to Miami. And there's a lot of, you know, a lot of chirping going on about how, how heavily, how heavily utilized Thomas is going to be, at least in the red zone, at least near the end zone, which is nice for Thomas because that's where he made his money with Adam Gase back in Denver, but Cutler's always been a guy that uses his tight ends, especially when he had Martellus Bennett, and then we saw Zach Miller in 2015. So look at that kind of opportunity and the overall usage there. Going back to 2013, 
if you look at the average numbers that he gave his tight end. So I looked at the top two tight ends on the team. And if you combine the top two tight ends going back to 2013, they averaged under Cutler 124 targets, 86 receptions, 894 receiving yards, and 6.3 touchdowns. So it's really high volume. There's a lot of receptions, targets, and receiving yards to be had there. And it's really, really doubtful that Thomas can match those numbers, you know, put up 80. He's not going to see, first of all, 100% of those looks if he does. So I would definitely drop the receiving yards, the receptions. But I think it's good news overall for him as a player, because not only is he going to be utilized on the goal line and as a red zone receiver, but I think having Cutler there gets him more usage inside the 20s. And it'll be more utilized in the passing game overall. So it's definitely an uptick for Thomas. Getting drafted right now as tight end 17, 146 overall. So he's definitely going to be returning value there. He was already on my top sleeper list for tight ends. And now I think he has a legitimate shot to be top 12 tight end by the year's end with Cutler. We get to Jay Ajayi. This does not change my outlook on Ajayi at all. Still top 15 pick for me. He's RB7 right now behind Bell, Zeke. David Johnson, Melvin Gordon, Devonta Freeman, DeMarco Murray, and then Jay Ajayi. So he doesn't move anywhere in this. They're not going to be utilizing him any less or any more. Given this, Miami ranked last year, they were fifth in terms of percentage of their plays that were run. And then going back to 2015 in Chicago, they were eighth under Cutler and Adam Gay. So can expect similar numbers in the, in the top 10 in terms of running plays percentage. JJ, no movement here. So that is my quick reaction. I'm sorry if I talked so fast and it literally didn't make any sense. If you found this information useful, please give this video that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll be breaking down shit like this all summer into the season. All that good stuff. So I'll see y'all on the next episode.